What's the deal, my people? You know it is Don Tony Teflon, and I'm back at you another one. And this one is Bran Stark versus the Night King. And in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly what role Bran Stark will play in defeating the Night's King. And this just isn't one theory. This is really a bunch of theories to answer this one question. So if you're into theories, you're going to be into this video. The first theory we have to tackle is this question right here. You're going to help me walk again? You'll never walk again. But you will fly. Now what does this statement mean? You'll never walk again, but you will fly. We have seen Bran do both of these things since he's met Blood Raven. We have seen him walk around with Blood Raven in visions, and we have seen him walk into birds and fly around in them. So is that what Blood Raven is talking about? Is the, does he mean that Bran will fly by walking into other animals? When Bran first runs up on Blood Raven, he asks him, He died so you could find what you have lost. You're going to help me walk again? And Blood Raven tells him no. So Bran is talking about his physical legs. So when we see Bran walking into animals, we know that the real physical Bran isn't actually running around with the animal. His body is laid out. When we see him entering the Weirwood Network, we know that the real Bran is laying by a tree, even though we see him walking around in the dreams. So Blood Raven must be talking about physical Bran not Bran in the Weirwood Network or Bran warging something. And I could further prove this by asking you this question. So pause the video if you want to and answer. What is the difference between Bran and Blood Raven? We know that Blood Raven knows the Weirwood Network far better than Bran. We know that Blood Raven most likely has much better control of these powers than Bran. But what is the difference between Blood Raven and Bran? Why isn't Blood Raven going out here and fighting this battle? The difference is Bran can still physically move. Blood Raven is old and stuck in the tree. So that must mean that Bran must physically have to do something. Because if it was just mentally, Blood Raven would have been able to pull it off himself. I don't want to be you. I don't blame you. You won't be here forever. You won't be an old man in a tree. So we continue on on this theory. How will Bran defeat the Night's King? And that leads us to how will Bran fly? Now in order for us to figure that out, we have to go into another theory. And that is the gift from Tyrion. I have a gift for you. Give that to your saddler. He'll provide the rest. You must shape the horse to the rider. Start with a yearling and teach it to respond to the reins and to the boy's voice. So we see Tyrion do this very nice thing for Bran and come up with this saddle so that he could ride a horse. Now was Tyrion just doing this at the kindness of his heart? Was this just meant to be shown that hey, Tyrion's not that bad of a guy after all. Look, he went out of his way. He didn't have to do this, but he did it anyway, just to give this to Bran. No, that is not Game of Thrones, my people. Not at all. We should know that this has to come back into play. Now, we know that they already made this saddle, so the saddle is there. But how will this come into play? Will we see Bran on horseback going up against the White Walkers and the Whites, slaying them and knocking them out one at a time? No, I do not think that is what it's meant to be. We have to listen to the words that Tyrion says to Bran when he gives him this saddle. Will I really be able to ride? You will. On horseback, you'll be as tall as any of them. So Tyrion tells Bran that on horseback, he will be as tall as anyone. And we first meet Bran what does he like to do? 
he likes to climb. Not only does he like to climb, he likes to climb to high places. So when you're tall, people look up to you. And the people that are on horseback in this show are the Dothraki. And who do the Dothraki look up to? They look up to Daenerys. Why? Because she rides a dragon. And she is taller than them all when she's on dragon back. And when I break it all down, you'll never walk again, but you will fly. Means to me that Bran Stark will use this saddle given to by Tyrion and fly on the back of a dragon. But why would he, why would this make sense for Bran Stark to be on the back of a dragon? And I think we have to look at the connection between Bran Stark and Blood Raven. But more than that, I think we have to look at the similarities between Bran Stark and Blood Raven. Now earlier I told you that there was a difference between them and that difference was that Bran Stark was able to move around and Blood Raven couldn't because we know Blood Raven would love to be in this battle if he could be. But what does Bran Stark and Blood Raven have in common? Brendan lost the eye during the first Blackfire Rebellion and rarely covered the empty socket with a patch, preferring to display his scar with the empty socket to the world. He wore his white hair straight into his shoulders, with the front brush forward to cover his missing eye. Although Brendan carried a Valyrian steel sword, Dark Sister, and was a good swordsman, he was an expert bowman who preferred to use his tall, weirwood longbow. The Raven's Teeth were the private guards of Lord Brendan Rivers. The long bowmen were called Raven's Teeth due to Brendan's nickname, Blood Raven, and they wielded weirwood bows. So even though this man possesses, without a doubt, one of the top three Valerian steel swords in this whole book series, he don't want it. He don't want nothing to do with that. He rather mess with his weirwood bow. And we see that Blood Raven lost his eye that awakened his powers and we seen that Bran lost his legs that awakened his power. Now, do we have a connection between Blood Raven and Bran when it comes to bows? And the answer is yes. From the very beginning of the show, we see Bran Stark with a bow. In fact, we never see him with a sword. All we see him with is a bow and arrow. Every scene they go around him. And I will tie this all in with this scene between Maester Lewin and Bran. With the Dothraki and Daenerys and the bow. Sometimes I worry you're too smart for your own good. I'll never shoot another arrow. And where is that written? You need legs to work a bow. Hmm. If the saddle Lord Tyrion designed actually works, you could learn to shoot a bow from horseback. Really? Dothraki boys learn when they're four years old. Why shouldn't you? So how will Bran defeat the Night's King? Bran will use the saddle given to him by Tyrion to mount a dragon with Jon Snow driving it, grab his bow, and shoot the Night's King's dragon, taking it down to the ground, allowing Jon Snow to fight the Night's King one-on-one. -on -one. But you tell me what you think in the comment section and oh yeah i do think that there's a possibility that Arya stark could steal the show as we seen in this scene so i'll say Arya is my backup plan <laughs> but you tell me what you think in the comment section and if you like the way I do this, please thumbs up this, please spread this across the realm, and please subscribe. And until next time, you know who it is. Peace and stay sexy.